Overlooking the River Stour by Thomas Hardy, 1840-1928 The swallows flew in the curves of an eight above the river gleam in the wet June's last beam. Like little crossbows animate, the swallows flew in the curves of an eight above the river gleam. Planing up shavings of crystal spray, a moorhen darted out from the bank thereabout, and through the stream shine ripped his way, planing up shavings of crystal spray, a moorhen darted out. Closed were the king cups, and the mead dripped in monotonous green through the day's morning sheen had shown it golden and honey bead, closed were the king cups, and the mead dripped in monotonous green. And never I turned my head alack, while these things met my gaze through the pane's drop-drenched glaze, to see the moor behind my back Oh, never I turned, but let, alack, these things hold my gaze. Okay, so this poem is by Thomas Hardy. I think it was written towards the end of his life. Um, he came from Dorset, which is uh, south-west England. And uh, the major river in Dorset is the River Stour. Um, he was an architect, a writer, and a poet. Okay, so what's the poem about? So, overlooking the River Stour, I think his house where he lived um, had a beautiful view of the river. And he's here he's in a very reflect, reflective mood. He's, look, he's thinking about the times when he was looking out of the window, but he didn't see um, the life that was happening behind him. Now, a little bit of history. Let's see. He was uh, married for 40, 40 years to Emma Gifford, and towards uh, the end of her life they became estranged they became separated and lived separated lives although maybe they probably still lived in the same house um, anyway then she died and he felt very guilty and very he was very badly affected by her death and I think this poem is saying that he was fixed on the beauty of the na of nature that was surrounding him and uh, how beautiful the, the river was and the birds and the colours. Um, but he didn't pay attention to his wife and uh, this is something that now that she has died, something that he will never get back and he feels uh, remiss and guilty because he was just wrapped up in his own things. So this poem is showing the beauty of nature but it's also telling us not to um, become uh, wrapped up and engrossed in, in our own lives and we need to uh, take care of the people around us and we need to pay heed to them. So the swallows flew in the curves of an eight above the river gleam in the wet June's last beam. So a swallow is a bird, it's a migratory bird and it flies very fast in the sky and they make their nests under the eaves. So the, fl f the swallows are flying in the sky in shapes of an eight. Yeah, this is probably early morning or, le or late evening. Yeah, and they're over the shining river, and it's uh, June, and it's a, uh, I think it's a rainy day, and the yeah the in w in the wet June's last beam, so the sun is going down, um, and he's 
uh, looking at these swallows flying above the river. Little crossbows animate, the swallows flew in the curves of an eight above the river gleam. So if you look at a swallow, it looks like a crossbow. You've got a curved bit at the front and the body at the back. And uh, he's uh, saying that he's making a, a simile saying that the uh, um, swallows look like miniature crossbows that are zooming all around the sky. Yeah, and then he repeats this here that the they're flying in the curves of an eight. Yeah, maybe also the curves of an eight. Yeah, could also be interpreted as infinity as well. Um, and he's just he's just engrossed in this beautiful scene. Planing up shavings of crystal spray. A moorhen darted out from the bank thereabout, and through the stream shine ripped his way. So to plane, notice, if it was double N it would be planning, but this is planing. A plane is a tool you use in woodwork to remove very thin strips from the surface of a piece of wood, and you have little shavings, little curly pieces of wood that come off. OK, so these are the shavings when you've been planing a piece of wood. And here, this, this is a lovely metaphor. Um, a moorhen is a water bird. And this uh, moorhen is throwing up um, spray, bits of water, which look like crystal. Yeah, and these are like little little slices of the water thrown into the air, and this moorhen darted out. It it moved it moved very quickly out from the bank thereabout in that area. So a moorhen suddenly moves out of the bank. A moorhen's a little smaller than a duck, not much, and it normally has a red beak, and it's a black bird. Yeah, they're very tranquil birds. So suddenly a moorhen moves out. And through the stream shine ripped his way. OK, so um, th he's making his way. He's like tearing a path through this str shiny stream. Yeah, stream shine. Here we, we go um, with this alliteration. Through the stream shine ripped his way. Um, planning, planing up shavings of crystal spray. S -s -s. Okay, so the moorhen is mm, uh, cutting the surface of the water. It's breaking it, and it, it's planing up. It's throwing up little pieces of spray of water. A moorhen darted out. So to dart out to move very rapidly. Closed were the king cups. So a king cup is a it's a little yellow flower that you find in uh, damp areas. So the the flowers were closed. So it's evening and the flowers close up very often for night. And the mead dripped in monotonous green. So the mead the mead is a meadow. And if you look mead meadow, this, these two words are linked the field and the field dripped in monotonous green so if it's dripping clearly this is alluding to the fact that it's a rainy day and in the first um, stanza we uh, saw saw that it was uh, a wet June and the ev everything in the field is green and this word monotonous, why does he use monotonous? Because I think this is preparing us for his change into the next thing. Because something is monotonous, it's almost suggesting it's boring. But I think the greens of a meadow uh, in the rain, I think there are incredible, incredible variations of green, but maybe only green. Through the day's morning sheen. Had sh though sorry though the day's morning sheen had shown it golden and honeybead, so 
okay the cut maybe he's saying here that the colors of green in the meadow in the field were much less intense now that the sun was setting because in the sheen in the shine of the morning the meadow had been golden with the king cups and full of honeybees okay so the day is day is falling yeah the end end of the day the end of an era the end of um something and here i think he's starting to um refer to his marriage and the death of his, his first wife um and he's about to 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 um turn to the idea that he he feels bad and he should have paid her more attention and i think maybe this is one of the reasons why it's the close of day because it's something that's finished so now 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 the meadow isn't as beautiful as it as it was during during the morning where it was gold and full of honey bees but it's just a monotonous green and then he repeats this again yeah and this repetition is is a clear poetic technique within within the this poem closed were the king cups notice instead of saying the king cups were closed he's changed the word order and the mead dripped in monotonous green and never i turned my head alack so i i was permanently looking at this alack alas oh woe is me how terrible i wish i hadn't done this alack alas i feel so sad about this so and never i turned my head so i i never um took my gaze away from the the, the beauty of this nature and that's so sad while these things met my gaze through the pain's drop drench glaze okay so i was always looking at these things through the uh window pane that was covered in raindrops yeah the glazing is the glass of the window so he's saying it's so sad that while these things were there to be seen i was always looking at them and i never and never i turned my gaze to see the more behind my back so i didn't see the more important things that were going on that were happening behind me yeah i didn't uh pay attention to um emma i didn't uh look after her i didn't um do do what i should have done i didn't uh look after her properly i was just engrossed in the the beauty of nature and the beautiful views outside and wrapped up in my own things oh never i turned but alack but let alack these things hold my gaze so i never turned to pay her attention and let my attention sadly be held by looking at these the, the beauty of nature and here he's showing his regret and i think this is now after she's died so this is probably um this is certainly after 1914 okay so a, a poem about the beauty of nature but also saying that we mustn't let um the beauty of life and uh, our own uh, uh the things that we we think are, are wonderful um divert our attention for um the people around us and we must take care of uh, our families and uh, the people that we love so enough if you enjoyed the video give it a rating, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you soon. Bye for now. Overlooking the River Stour by Thomas Hardy.